Hi, it's Susan Mershon, The Techie Mentor. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Today's tips on charting in Microsoft Excel 2011 for the Mac. So um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, thanks for coming by today. And I do uh, all of my YouTube videos primarily on the Mac. And today is no exception, as I mentioned. And a lot of the things that you'll learn will carry over to the PC. So feel free to stay and watch and learn. So what I have in front of me is just a simple budgeting spreadsheet and what I need to do is I want to I want to see um, the different months January through June but I want to see it in a graphic representation not the numbers so I actually want to see it in a chart form and creating a chart in Microsoft Excel is fairly simple to do um, first of all you're going to notice as I mentioned I've got my date range across um, row 2 and then over here in column A, I have the different categories, if you will, for what these numbers represent. Salaries and wages, benefits, payroll taxes, commissions and bonuses. And then I also have a total. I'm not interested in the total. I'm only interested in the detailed breakdown. So what you want to do is you want to select all the categories as well as the numbers and the date range that's going to make up your chart. So you'll notice I've gone from A2 all the way down to G6. And that does include a blank cell, and that's fine. Uh, Microsoft Excel is smart enough to leave that out. It knows it's just a placeholder. So again, you want to select your categories, all of your numbers, and the date range. And then a simple way to do this is simply click on the Insert menu and choose Chart. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring up the charting toolbar. And you'll notice this first several um, images, or buttons if you will, are the different types of charts available in Excel. You've got column, line, pie, bar, area, scatter, and then other, which would group several of the other types of charts together. I'm going to just create a really quick column. And again, notice that I have a drop-down menu next to each of these types of charts, which simply means there's more than what you see here. So when I click on column, you're going to notice that it expands out to show me. Well, I've got 2D and 3D, but then I've also got cylinder, cone, and pyramid. So I've got all different types um, to work with. I'm just going to go with just a very simple clustered column, and I'm going to click on it. And Excel is going to go ahead and create my chart for me. And it puts it in its own little window that I can move around, but notice it's not actually embedded on the spreadsheet, and it's also not a tab in the worksheet. So I don't really like this because one, it's too small for me, and two, I really want it to be another tab in my workbook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this and, and make it a tab in my workbook. But first I want to show you, as I move my mouse around inside the chart, you're going to notice that the comment box changes to tell me what it is I'm hovering over. So now I'm hovering over the vertical or value axis. Um, now I'm hovering over the legend. And now I'm hovering over the horizontal or category axis. So just keep in mind that as you move around the actual chart, your mouse is going to tell you what you're pointing at or what you're hovering over. So I'm going to go over here to this white space, which is called the chart area, and I'm going to right click with my mouse. And what I'm going to ask um, Excel to do for me is move the chart. So I click on move chart, and I'm going to click on move it to a new sheet. Now I can actually change the name of it here if I wanted to. So I can call it, you know, budget chart or, or whatever works best for you. But you're welcome to change the name of the sheet right here, or you can always change it later. So I'm going to click on OK. And there you go. It actually puts it in as its own separate tab, separate from the actual spreadsheet that it was created from. Now the other options you have is you can actually embed it on the same spreadsheet as you want, or you can leave it in the free floating box. But for me, I wanted it to be another tab. So here it is. This is my lovely little spreadsheet. Let's just real quick take a moment and let's talk about the, the parts of the uh, chart. So first and foremost, here's the legend. The legend just tells you what the colors represent on the chart. So blue is salaries, red is benefits, green is payroll, and purple is commissions. And by a, a very quick glance you can tell which one cost us the most money. It's the red bar, which is the benefits. Okay. Along the bottom you have what is called your horizontal or category axis, also known as the X axis. And how I always remember this is I think of a picnic table with the X's that hold up the table. That helps me remember that that is my X axis. Okay. This is your vertical or value axis, also known as the Y axis. 
And then you've got your plot area, which is where the actual chart is setting on. It's the plotting area. And then as I hover over each bar, it brings up what's called a series. Series, it says it's the uh, salaries, wages, point January 12, value 521. So it actually tells me what the value of this bar is. It's 521. This is benefits, 2350. Benefits, 5511. And again, I'm just hovering over this. Okay. And then if I hover over here, this is just called the chart area, which we saw earlier. Okay. So just a very quick kind of run through of the different parts of your chart. So let me give you a really big and quick tip. If you want to edit anything on this chart, all you have to do is hover over it until the little note tells you what you're hovering over. And if that's what you're looking for, all you need to do is simply double click on it. So let's say that I want to change my legend. So I'm hovering over my legend. I can see that it tells me so. And I'm just going to double click. And it brings up what's called the format legend box. This is such a wonderful shortcut. And this works in Excel on the PC too. Double click on whatever you want to change and Excel is smart enough to bring you the formatting options for what you clicked on. So again, format legend, I clicked on the legend. Here's where I can change the placement and then notice over here on the right you've got, excuse me, left, you've got all of these other options that you can do to your legend. So I'm going to change mine to the top. Let me move this box down so you can see it. Put it up here. I can change the font. And then I can go about and change the fill, the line, the shadow, and all that kind of stuff. So let's just say I want to change the color of my font. Let me make a dark blue. Okay. And then maybe I want it to be small caps. Okay. And I think, oh, you know what? It needs to be a little bit bigger. So let me make it 12. There we go. That looks better. And then I also have the option to do the fill, which means I can actually put a color behind this. So let's say I want to put a, a gray. I can gray it in. I can change the line. So I can make it maybe the dark blue. Okay. Then you've also got the gradient. You can also do weights and arrows. So I can actually make this a thicker line so you can see it a little bit better. And then I can do a shadow and I can do soft gl uh, glow and soft edges. But basically you can just go from option to option and when you're finished you click on OK and voila, you're done. Pretty simple. Okay. So same thing. Let's say that I want to change this background area called the plotting area. I just make sure it says plot area and I double click and guess what? Format plot area. And I've got fill, line, shadow, and then you know a couple other options. So let's say I just wanted to put a color behind here. And notice you have gradient, which would give you the gradient flow. You can do picture or texture, and you can also do pattern. I'm just going to do a color. I'm just going to do this, make it a little grayer. And then I could change the lines if I wanted and so on and so forth. So you get the, the basic idea. Okay, so now I've made those changes. I can also come down here to my category axis. I can double click on that and same thing. I can change the scale. If it is a number, I can change that. I can change the tick marks, which are these ticks that show up between, which will actually change the length, the overall length and width of this uh, chart if I do change that. Font. I can add a text box if I want, fill, line. You get, so you get the idea. So let me go back to scale real quick. And scale just says the scale of this chart. So you can see the minimum and the maximum is January to June, which is correct. It's based on months. I have major and minor units. And then where does my vertical axis cross? It crosses right here at the, at the front. And then I can flip it around. So there's all these wonderful little things I can do. Um, I can also click on text, which would allow me to change the text options. And if it's a date, which is what I was on, automatically uh, figured out it's a date, so it gave me that option. But if I wanted to, I could click on any of these and make the changes. Okay, so let me say I want to change my font, and I want to make it that dark blue color, and I want to make it a little smaller. And then maybe I want to put a fill behind there. I'll say okay. Now notice I only put it right behind the actual dates. It didn't do anything else. Okay, so you get the idea. So it's really easy to create a chart. Once you get the chart up, you can create it either within the spreadsheet or you can make it its own tab. And then once you have it where you want, it's just a simple double click to change whatever it is that you're looking for. So now this is the actual um, grid lines in my chart. So I can make those a little darker so you can see that. Um, and then same thing, I can double click over here on my axis and I have the same options, right? I can make, you know, font changes. 
so I can make this that lovely blue color as well so it matches right and then I have the scaling options so the scale would you know maximum and um, minimum so it goes from 0 to 6,000 but I can change these by coming in here and making those changes and I will do a, a much more detailed version um, of charting in Excel this is just to get you started so check back for that um, and then I can go in here and I can do the fill again and then I can say okay All right so that just kind of gives you a really quick idea of how easy it is to um, format your chart the other thing is is that I can format these bars so for instance I clicked on the red bar and you notice that every one of the red bars is selected because it's a series they all belong together and same thing with the purple or the green right or the blue so let's say I want to change the green bar so I'm going to double click on any one of the green bars and it comes up with a format data series up here is the actual formula that makes up this series and here's where I can change the fill color so let's say I want to put a pattern in here so I go over to the pattern tab and I can say okay let's put something fun let's put that in there and notice it gives me that pattern but then I get to choose the foreground and background color so I can go ahead and go with green and then maybe my background color is just a, uh, I don't know, let's just make this obnoxious, shall we? A different color. Oops, those are the same colors. There we go. So now I can have this lovely little pattern. I click on OK. Voila. Okay, and you'll notice that my legend automatically made the change as well. Now, what if you only want to change one bar of a series? So not the whole series, right, but just one individual bar. So watch what happens. I'm going to click on the red bar. And then when I click on the red bar again, notice that when I clicked on this one twice, it's the only one that's selected. The other ones no longer have the selection bars on it. So that means if I double click on this one, I'm only going to change a data point, not a data series. So the difference is, is the series is all of the bars in this instance, and a point is just one of a series, so one of the bars in this instance. So I can go in here and change my, yeah, let me change my color here. Let's make it a darker red, and then I'm going to go over here and do a pattern, and let's just do something, I don't want green, but you get the idea, I can go in here and make all kinds of fun little changes, and then when I click on OK, notice it only changed the one bar, it didn't change any of the other of the red bars. So that's changing just one data point. So let me go back, and again, I clicked on it once, and if I click on it a second time, it deselects the other series, and I double click on that. I have an options, right? So I can change any overlap or if there's a gap, a fill, a line. So you get the right idea. So pretty much the same choices that you had before. So I'm going to say OK. OK, so today's tip was just how to create a quick chart in Excel, make it its own tab, and then do some formatting. The last thing I want to show you real quick is you can also change the chart type at any time. So I can come over here and say, you know what? I really don't want this type of column. Maybe I want a 3D and I'd rather have a stacked column, for instance. So I can click on the column button or whatever type of chart you're looking for and then select the option that you want. There you go. So now I've just changed my chart to be a 3D stacked, which gives me a little more uh, visualization. Uh, and then I also have other places that I can actually format now because I have a three dimensional, I have a floor that I can change. So I can go in here and I can again, you know, put in some colors to make it stand out, um, so on and so forth. And then you can actually do the same thing for the entire chart area. I can actually add a fill for the background of the entire chart. Okay, so that's just a real quick lesson on how to create a chart in Excel format that chart, and then also change the chart type.